uh, normal maps or ID masks, um, it's important to get a clean bake on each one of your elements. Now, whenever you have a, uh, an object like this weapon and there are multiple parts to it, um, you run the chance of baking in extra information in certain areas of your normal map. So, for example, if we were to take a look at the frame of our weapon, you'll see that we have this key lock that is here. The problem with that being there is that its information will be baked down on top of the frame, and you'll have these little lines that go across your normal map. Now, it may be hidden whenever everything comes back together, but it doesn't create a very clean normal map. And um, there may be changes that you'll have to make later on. And so in order to get clean bakes, we want to use a method called exploding the mesh. So to do this, it's very simple. Uh, what you'll do is you'll animate the weapon parts or the parts of your mesh to different positions over one frame. So what I like to do is I like to go to Auto Key, turn that on, and then switch to Frame 1. Now you'll see that I've already animated this process. So just to kind of give you an overview of what that looks like, let's go back to Frame 0. Let me turn off Auto Key, and I'm going to come up to my Selection Set, which I already created, and I have my Low Poly Set. With all of this, you'll see that I have some keyframes, and I'm simply going to delete those out so I can show you this process altogether. So, with those keyframes deleted, if I go to frame 1, you'll see that my high poly mesh is already exploded. I'm not going to go through the process of doing that. Um, also, uh, let's see, we've got a low poly mesh here. Let me go ahead and take its keyframes out. Make sure you go back to frame 0 before you do that. Alright, so with that, let's go back to our frame 1. And actually, let me make that part of my selection set really quickly. Let me go to low poly and then add that. There we go. So now it should be able to select all of those. There we go. All right, so first thing is first, let's just take each element that we've separated out. Uh, the first part is going to be the cylinder. What I like to do is I like to just align it to the object, but let's make sure that we have auto key turned on. Use the align tool and align it to your object, and there are a couple of things that you'll want to change. Normally, whenever I explode a mesh, I always pull it out in a single direction. So in this case, I have moved the cylinder in the X position. So I'm going to turn off the Y position and the Z position, and then I'm going to make sure that I am aligning it by the center of both objects. So by doing so, it's going to perfectly align. Hit OK on that, and then we'll just do the same thing for the next pieces. Align, and it should snap right to that, and just hit OK. Let's go ahead and do the trigger now. Now you'll notice that this is a different direction. That's actually in the Y direction. So when we align this, you'll notice that it's not changing. So turn off the X position and switch it to the Y position and hit OK. Same thing for the hammer. Okay, And then we also have the key lock, which I'll do the same thing. And there we go. So now we have all of our pieces separated out that we want to bake. Notice the frame itself. Um, is made up of one object, and so we're making sure that our high poly mesh is also there. So this is the process of exploding the mesh. So now you can switch to frame zero and everything will come back together perfectly into your original position. But whenever we switch to frame one, this will allow us to make our bakes um, and do it very quickly and easily. So now with that, let's go ahead and move on into our next lesson where we'll talk about the main workflow for baking out texture that we can use uh, that has multiple different colors on it. And those colors represent a different material. Now whenever we're painting in our uh, texture software, uh, we can mask out those certain colors and only paint on those areas, which makes it very easy whenever we have objects that have multiple materials on it. So let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing we need to do is go ahead and select our low poly object, or actually our high poly object, excuse me, and we're going to isolate them. So we should just see the high poly gun here. Now you'll notice that it's got this white color on it. What I want to do is I want to start separating out the different parts uh, with different materials. So for example, our gun is mostly metal, and it's mostly going to have this gun metal color to it. 
but there are going to be some other parts like the screws um, that I want to be brass. We also have this handle which is going to be wood so that's going to be a separate material altogether. So the ID mask is going to help us with this. First thing we want to do is go ahead and create our different materials that we want to use on this. So I'm going to go ahead and drag one out, double click on it and rename it to gunmetal. Let's create another one and I'm going to double click on it and rename this to brass and then one more and we're going to rename this to wood. Now with all three of those um, set there, let's go ahead and change their colors. So on the gunmetal, we're going to change this to red. And make sure that it's a true red, so red at 255 and then the green and blue is at 0 and 0. Also make sure that your hue is set to 0 and your saturation and value are at 255. Now with that set, let's go ahead and apply that to the entire object. Now I know that that is getting rid of um, a lot of different pieces. We're applying this over everything, but we're going to separate it out here in just a moment. So with that, let's assign it. Okay, there we go. And then let's go to our next one. Let's change the diffuse color to green. Make sure it's a, gr a true green, just like we had said before. Now the hue is going to be at 85, 255 on your saturation and value, and hit OK. Um, then let's go over to this one. Let's set this to a true blue. Set your red to zero and your green to zero and hit OK. There we go. So let's go ahead and apply our brass materials. I'm going to go ahead and drag this off to the side because all I'm going to do whenever I'm ready um, is I'm going to hit the assign to selection. So let's go ahead and select our high poly mesh. Let's go to frame uh, one just to make this a little bit easier. So on the frame itself we have several different parts that need to be brass, but you'll see that everything is selected. So what we'll do is we'll select by element. Now this process can take a little bit of time because um, whenever you're in element mode on a high poly object, 3ds Max tends to run a little bit slower. So what we'll do is we'll select and whenever that selection comes up we'll just simply hit assign and then turn off element mode. This is important because with element mode turned off, we can now pan and orbit freely. So let's come over to the next part here, which is going to be this. Let's select that entire element and then just simply assign it once it has been assigned. And There we go. So we'll move down to the handle and we'll go to the screw on the inside here. That is going to also be set to green. Okay, great. And let's turn off element mode. Let's back up. And I think that's everything on this side so far. Let's actually grab this screw right here on the key lock. So element mode. We'll actually select it and then go to element mode because it's a separate object from the gun altogether. And then we're going to assign that. There we go. And then let's back up. Let's go to the other side of the weapon and we have another part right here so let's select the gun let's select the inner part that's supposed to be brass we'll assign that and then we're going to uh, come in and grab the other parts of this so element mode select the inner part of the screw make sure that you don't get that outer part there you can hold down control to select multiple pieces and then once you've assigned it, turn off element mode and then move on. So we have one more right here. Assign that. Don't forget to turn off element mode once that is finished. And then we're going to come in and we're going to grab our last part right here. And then we're going to assign that. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to deselect really quickly so I can see everything up to this point, and I think we're pretty good. I don't see anything else um, that needs to be changed as far as the brass material goes. Now we need our wood material. So I'm going to come along the back side here of my handle, and I'm going to be able to grab both of them at the same time. So select the gun, go to element mode, select one side of the handle, hold control, select the other, and then use your blue material in this case. 
and then assign that. Perfect. Turn off element mode, and now you have your ID masks set up. Now, like I said, if you have other parts that you want to be brass, so let's say that you want this little key lock part back here, um, not key lock, but the, um, the road hater to be a different color, um, besides gunmetal, you could do that. Um, so let's say that we want this entire thing to be brass instead. Uh, we would just go ahead and select it and choose our brass material that we have set up and then assign that. Okay, there we go. Everything is looking really good up to this point. Happy with that. And then all we do now is we get this ready for baking. So let's turn off our isolation mode and we have our ID mask ready to be baked and then we can also bake our normal maps at the exact same time. Materials for a high poly mesh to bake out our ID masks. So now let's get it started with the actual baking process. To show you how this works, um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to um, attach all of the low poly objects so that way they bake the same map at the same time. So for this particular uh, weapon, the UVs all share the same space. That's how they were set up. Now they are separate objects right now um, simply because they're going to be animated that way or they could be animated that way. Um, but whenever you come down to baking, it's always a good idea to have objects um, all on the same UV space. And now if yours requires to have two maps for something like a weapon, normally it's going to be in one texture map. So for this to work, we need to make sure that all of the low poly objects are all attached. So let's make sure that we're at frame one, so that way they're in their exploded state. And then we're going to go down to attach and I'm going to use the attach list and I'm, I'm going to select all of the low poly pieces and then attach those. So now that all of those are attached as a single object, now what I have to do is come in and um, change the name of this. So I'm going to call it LP underscore revolver. Okay, and this is just going to help with the naming here in just a moment. And then we're going to hit zero to bring up our render to texture. Whoops. Uh, to bring up our render to texture dialog box. So with this up, let's go ahead and change the output path. By clicking on the browse button, we can choose which folder we want this to bake our maps into. So for this particular uh, course, we're going to put it in our project files folder under 3ds Max files, in the scene assets folder, and then inside of images. Hit OK on that, and then it's going to save those there. Now let's click on setup and let's make sure that we're using the default scanline renderer here in 3ds Max and I'm going to go down and if yours says something different you'll want to go to the assign renderer and change the production renderer okay now let's go to the renderer uh, tab here and let's make sure that anti-aliasing is turned on with catmull rom as our filter and the same thing with their global uh, super sampler set to hammer slay now the global super sampling is going to be used more for the ambient occlusion which we'll bake out in another lesson. Let's go ahead and close this as we're finished with it. And then let's go back and let's make sure that we have our low poly mesh selected. And you'll see that that comes up in our list here. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to the projection mapping. Here we'll want to pick what objects we want to use to bake. Now, for this, before we click on pick and we choose the objects we want to bake, which are going to be our high poly meshes, we want to go ahead and make sure that we're under the Create tab. The reason that I switch over to the Create tab is because whenever you have lots of objects with lots of polygons and you pick them in the Modify panel, uh, what it's going to try to do is it's going to add the projection modifier, which is what it's supposed to do, but it also tries to display that in the modifier stack, and sometimes that can cause a crash. And so just to kind of remove that out, I switch over to my Create tab just in case. So let's click Pick, and then in our uh, dialog box, we want to pick all of our targets. So in this case, it's going to be all of the high poly objects. Go ahead and add those, and give it just a moment to add those to the list. So for me, that took about 15 to 20 seconds to add all of those. It might take a little longer for you, uh, so you just want to be aware of that. So now looking at the rest of our options, if we go a little bit lower, we can set up the maps that we want to output in this case. So right now I've got some residual maps from maybe a previous project or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete those out as I don't need those. 
and I'm gonna say add and we're going to use a diffuse map which is going to give us our ID mask what this diffuse map will bake out is only the color information that is on the targets meaning our high poly objects then let's hold down control and select normals map and add the elements now you can select each one and you can modify their properties so for the first one the diffuse map uh, we're going to go ahead and rename it and in this case I'm going to call it LP underscore revolver underscore ID dot TGA and that's going to give me a target file then I'm going to switch its size to 2048 by 2048 let's go ahead and select the normals map let's do the same thing except this time we're going to say underscore NM for normal map dot TGA and then we're going to change the target map slot to none that's at the very top of the list I don't want it to add anything to a material or anything like that so I'm going to leave it just the way it is then we're going to um, set our size to 2048 by 2048 now before we can actually bake this we need to make sure that we're taking care of our projection cages so with the low poly object selected switch over to your modify panel and you'll see that there are these blue cages that show up around all of our objects really quickly you'll notice that the cages don't really look all that pretty um, they're kind of a jumbled mess and that's going to create a problem with our bake so what I do is I just simply reset the cages you can find this under your cage rollout if you expand it and let's go ahead and turn on shaded and point to point while we're here and then scroll down to the bottom and hit reset that's going to reset the cage to the shape of the low poly mesh now whenever you are creating the low poly mesh of your objects you want to make sure that you adhere fairly closely to the high poly mesh remember we are in a day where polygon count isn't as important as it used to be yes we still want to make sure that we're keeping polygons count our polygon counts as low as possible uh, but we don't want to do it so much that we have to modify these projection cages too much so all we really have to do at this point is to come in and go to our cage sub object mode of the projection modifier and select the cage that we want to modify at this point so I'm going to select all of the points in the cage of the gun itself or the frame so go to your top view hitting T on the keyboard and do a marquee selection around just those points in the frame then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll use the push amount and we'll push that up until it covers up all of the high poly object so as you can see the saturated color sticking out of the top that's going to miss whenever it does the ray casting to project that information so what we'll do is we'll take our push amount we'll left click and drag that up until all of our um, information is inside of that now look at this piece right here this floating geometry I want that to be inside of that so I'm going to continue to just push on that just ever so slightly until that covers it up this should be pretty good we shouldn't have any issues out of that now we'll go to the next part and we'll go ahead and we'll push that up okay and then we're going to go to the cylinder we'll push this as well and I'm going to go ahead and come inside of the cylinder itself making sure that none of that is sticking out that looks pretty good now one thing that is a little bit of a concern to me is this piece right here notice how it's kind of mushroomed out that might be a little too far so I'm gonna select just those points in that cage and then take my push amount down until it's about the same shape so it should look something like that very rarely do we want to use any custom cages now what that means is by taking the cage and changing its shape altogether it should adhere pretty closely to the shape that you've created alright now let's go ahead and move on to the trigger we'll select all of the points in that and then we're gonna push that up a little bit okay so it should look something like that do the same thing for the hammer and we'll push that up this process you shouldn't spend a whole lot of time on um, if you've modeled the low poly object uh, fairly well uh, meaning that you've given it enough geometry to support the detail of your high poly mesh okay all right so now that we have all of the pieces ready to go and everything is pushed out let's turn off the cage um, sub object mode of that projection modifier and then all we have to do now is simply come in and hit render so let's hit render and then we'll wait for that to bake out alright so we finished baking out our maps now it looks like 
this is just the ID mask. But I'm going to assure you that the normal map has also baked in the background. So anytime that we do multiple maps, they're all going to bake at the same time. Um, so you'll also notice that there's some shading information on this as well. Uh, don't get fooled by that. That's just inside of this render. It will not show up in your texture map, and I'll show you here in just a moment. Now, one thing that I want to touch on really quickly is that 3ds Max has a really great feature that allows you to see um, if there are any um, errors in your map bake. So to see that, let me go ahead and close this down. Actually, let me move it over. Um, let's go over to the render to texture. To set this up, you'll need to come up to your options under the projection mapping. And you'll see right here we have this ray mist color, and it's set to red. If you have this turned on, which it should be by default, what it will do is it will lay down this color anywhere that there was a problem in the bake. So if I come in and I say, all right, let's switch this over to white and then hit OK, because obviously we have this red color that's showing up, and I close this down and then rebake it, anything that white shows up means that there was a problem with the bake and that we need to make some adjustments to the cage itself, meaning that the high poly mesh has not been contained within um, that projection cage. So I'm going to go ahead and rebake this and you might see a couple of errors in this. So give me just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and wait for that to finish. All right, so we finished baking out our maps and you can see that there are a couple of small places that have these white dots and that means that we have a miss in some of this. Uh, so what do we do about this? How do we take care of it? Well, first we need to identify where those problems are happening. So as you can see on these little uh, pieces here, um, that is actually around the cylinder. That's that indention. Um, you can also see maybe a couple of pieces here, uh, something like that. I don't know if that's really that big of a deal um, there. I think that's just kind of a minor piece there. Um, but yeah, I think I think everything else came out all right. Now, if you have any errors in some of your bakes, and they really don't seem to make any sense, um, you might want to go ahead and check to make sure that there's even any information there for um, the bake itself. If there's no high poly mesh in a certain area, um, then just ignore the error because it didn't, it wasn't able to catch anything. Okay, um, so sometimes you can go ahead and overlook those errors. So how do we fix these? Do we want to rebake it? Probably. You could also take it into Photoshop and fix it, but I really don't recommend doing that uh, simply because if you're baking out maps and uh, you're going to pass this off to somebody else in a project, what happens if something else goes wrong and you need to rebake that map? Then you need to go back into Photoshop, make the fixes, and then uh, go through this whole process again. It's always better to have the, the source as right as possible. Try to stay away from uh, doing any post-editing and any other software. So let's go ahead and close this really quickly. And then I'm going to take care of these little points right here. And you can see it right there. So all I do is just simply go to my cage. And I'll take these points. And I'll just move them out a little bit. Now, whenever I move points individually like this, I always go to my local. So that way I can pull it straight out in the Z direction and just pull it out enough to where it's um, giving us the result that we require. Okay. Now, if it's a major change, I will never do it this way. If it's a major change, that means there might be a problem with my mesh. Maybe it's just not, um, ha just doesn't have enough supporting detail. Or um, maybe I just need to push the entire cage out a little bit more. Okay. But very rarely will I ever make changes like this. This is a very special case sort of thing. Okay, so I think everything else looks pretty good on that. We can go ahead and rebake it, and we should be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and rebake it in between lessons, just hitting render. And then when we come back, we're going to take those maps that we just uh, created. We're going to apply those to um, our mesh just to make some inspections. And then um, we'll get a maps look that we've just baked out. Now, one thing that I really want to mention here before we get started is that I have saved a separate file out where the objects are still separated. Um, you always want to 
create multiple files whenever you're working through the map making process. The reason for that is it makes things easier if you have to go back. So let's say that um, you have all of your projection cages set up and you need to rebake something. You have a file that you can go to to rebake that. Um, and then let's say that you have the file itself where all the pieces are separated out for animation. Um, it still shares the same UVs and you can still apply those maps to it. So make sure that you're working in ways that you can stay very flexible. All right, so now let's go ahead and um, select the low poly mesh. So with that selected, let's isolate it. And then I'm going to come in and let me switch over to frame zero. And I'm going to create a material. Now looking at the screen here, you'll notice that something weird is happening. It kind of looks like we're getting into the see-through. Something is going on with the material. It's not anything that we have to worry about. It's nothing that we did wrong. Um, let's go ahead and create a new material for this. And on this material, I'm going to go ahead and double click on the bump. And I'm going to go to normal bump. And then on the normal bump, normal channel, we're going to use bitmap. We're going to come in and we're going to look for the map that we just created. In this case, it's going to be the revolver normal map. So it should be this one right here. Uh, let's go ahead and hit open on that. And then let's double click on the diffuse color bitmap and then we're going to look for the revolver um, underscore ID. Open that. There we go. So double click on this and then make sure that's selected. Go to your maps. Change the bump value from 30 to 100 so we can see that. And then I'm also going to um, select all of the pieces on the gun itself and then assign that and then show maps and viewport close that down and then if we take a look at our viewport you'll see that the ID mask is applied as it should be but there's a problem um, you'll notice that um, the normal map is not showing up so to get the normal map to show up we need to go to shaded and then go to materials and then show realistic materials with maps in the viewport so that should go ahead and apply and there you can see our normal map is now applied to this perfect so now it looks like the high poly mesh. We can't really tell for one from the other. So it's looking really good at this point. Really happy with that. So once you have this down, you're happy with the way things look at the testing, um, you're ready to go ahead and move on to the next phase of the baking. Uh, in this case, the ambient occlusion. I always wait on the ambient occlusion to start that baking process uh, because it takes a little longer. It takes some time to set up and uh, the, the renders themselves take a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and set up our scene in the next lesson.